How you doing guys? Chris here. So we're gonna retry this. Uh, if you saw last week's video, it was kind of a failure. Uh, lighter didn't equal better. So I went back with the same setup, uh, trimmed the fat as much as I could. I got a couple of grams off. So with a new connector and a new antenna, we're talking about maybe a weight savings of about four grams, five if I'm lucky. And uh, yeah, we're gonna run this test again. We got the uh, 4S 5000 milliamp hour Lion pack and uh, we're gonna go for an hour. So here's the, uh, here's the setup. I don't know if you can see it. Turn the camera around. Not gonna happen today. All right, we're gonna use this camera. We're back out here in this spot again because uh, it's the less grown over area. So if for some reason the quad fail safes, at least I can find it again. So uh, what are my conditions? Looks like the wind is approximately four to five miles per hour. Uh, there's a couple of gusts going on, but it's not too bad. Uh, it's about 90 degrees and this is the only shade I have. So hopefully it lasts an hour and this is all worth it and I can get some sun. <laughs> we'll see, thanks. How you doing guys? Well, I had to come back. Uh, had a motor wire come loose. So I had to resolder that back on. So it's definitely later in the day, end of the day. Uh, had some construction equipment move in, but whatever, it's not really in the way. It's fine. We're gonna do this flight. We're gonna get this done. So goal is over an hour. Uh, anything over hour and five minutes is icing on the cake. All right, let's do this. All right, just landed, made it pretty good. 65 minutes, give or take a couple of seconds. But, whoo, there she is, beeping away. Whew. All right, let's watch the review. So if I looked exhausted, I was. That was a long time. So here's a recap. I went on to Google Maps and I outlined the area in which I flew and that gave me a good estimate of how long the track actually was. Then I took the average of distance traveled and time and I figured out about how fast I was going and about how long I was traveling for. Well, as you saw in the video leading up to this, good news, 65 minutes, give or take a couple of seconds from arming and disarming the quad. But that is really good for a quad that was under 500 grams. I think I just took a picture of it uh, before the flight. I'll post it here. So 483.7 grams. Man, that was... That was quite a flight. So let me tell you a little bit about that flight. Uh, I don't think you can prepare yourself for sitting completely still for an hour and five minutes, uh, especially in the summertime when there's bugs coming at you, the, the sun's kind of just burning into one side of your body. Your body starts to get uncomfortable and you start shifting around, yeah. It was, it was an endurance feat to say the least. But let's talk about this quad. So uh, this is the V2 of this frame. This is the V1, right? So we started off with this and my intent was to have a sub 250 gram seven inch frame. Still is my intent. Um, but then we started really getting into the Lion batteries. So I wanted something that could hold the Lion. So I added this brace piece right here so I could add the uh, Lion pack comfortably, you know, so it wouldn't wiggle around in the air because I was having a little bit of movement because there was no place, you know, it was a big long battery and it could actually wiggle back and forth with the only one strap piece in here in the middle. So I had them add this. And then what I didn't do was take away all these holes that were existing here because this frame is intended to be flown either in a plus style or in an X style. That's what all these extra holes were for. And of course you can do uh, different mounting 30 by 30 or 20 by 20, but that wasn't necessary in this because you can't fly this in a plus configuration with these extra 
uh, braces or supports for the battery. So I went in and I talked to Brett and me and him worked out a V2.1. So we deleted those holes, added a battery strap because it didn't have a battery strap in there, made it possible for 20 by 20 and 25 by 25 mounting. So this is actually V2.1 and we'll fly this again soon. But right now, this is the one we just flew. Uh, just flew this. It is a 39.5 gram frame. It is 4.5 millimeters thick. Uh, it has cutouts here for weight savings. Uh, so you still get the, the four and a half uh, millimeter thick carbon, but it's still super light at 39.5 grams. And I had this tuned to be a sub 250 gram quad. And when I was flying it at 483 grams, the tune was off. So I will have to go in and retune that. You know, even at sub 250 grams, anything above 75, 80% throttle, I get some wiggles and some vibrations, but uh, that was happening really early on at a 430, or excuse me, 483 gram quad. So that's gonna need some adjusting. Uh, these motors, I love these motors. I love these props. This combination is the best. So this is the Diatone Mamba 2204 at 1450 kV. And this prop is the 70 by 24 RC timer prop. So it's a carbon fiber prop. Uh, it's actually a four millimeter hole, not a five millimeter hole. So I had to drill out the center and put these plastic pieces in here to sandwich them in between just so that it would fit properly on there. It's still lighter than any other prop I can find. Even with all of that, it's 3.5 grams per prop as opposed to the next lightest 4.6 grams per prop. So that's what I like about this. Also, the flight controller comes with BL Heli S and I upped that to uh, JESC software. So it gave me a little bit more efficiency. I was really looking for that in this kind of setup because I wanted to do a long endurance quad. So here we are, sub 500 grams. Why is sub 500 grams important? That's the weight that insurance companies draw the line at for whether or not you need a separate insurance policy for your drone. So if you're under 500 grams, your basic insurance will cover you. Anything over 500 grams, you have to get a separate policy. So that's why this was a big deal. Um, I think all, I think sub 250 grams should be thrown out the window and everything should be put into the either above or below 500 gram category. Because frankly, Insurance companies have done a lot more work estimating damages due to drones for uh, the, due to their weight than the FAA or anybody else has. So I don't know why they don't listen to insurance companies. They've already put in the legwork, but say la vie. So this was V2. This is V2.1 with the extra little added features and uh, deletions. I hate to call it a V3 because it's basically the same thing as this one, only, you know, I didn't put a hole in there and I added a battery strap. So I wouldn't call it a V3. It's definitely a V2.1. And then the V1, it still isn't a bad frame at sub 250 gram setup. Uh, if you're only going to run it that way, it's still a really good frame. Uh, originally, I went online and I was looking for a toothpick style seven inch and I didn't find anything that could do uh, both a plus configuration and an X configuration because I like to switch between them. So me and Brett, we, uh, we figured it out. I say me and Brett, 
Brett does a lot of the work. <laughs> I just tell him what I want, uh, make some sketches, and then he makes it happen. All right, so what else is in here? So we got the all-in-one with the 35 amp ESCs. Uh, I think this is an F4. I'm thinking about upgrading to an F7, but with this setup, I didn't really need to. Uh, this is a Cadex Vista with a Nebula Nano camera. So this is DJI Digital. Uh, what I did was basically separate it all. It's a naked Vista and I put a linear antenna on there to save weight. This linear antenna is 0.9 grams. So not even a full gram for the antenna. Canopy. Uh, the canopy was 3D printed, not a big deal. Um, I think you can find a million of them on Thingiverse. And I went with the, the smallest uh, capacitor I could put on there. I believe that capacitor only weighed a gram and a half, and but, but I still had to have one. And because the Lion pack uh, has a XT60 on there. I just replaced that. It had this XT30 on there originally for when I fly it sub 250, but the adapter itself, this thing I was flying, this weighs five grams just by itself. So I got rid of that and just basically removed the XT30, put the S X XD60 on there. And yeah, four gram difference. So every gram counts when you're trying to go for distance and 65 minutes of flight, give or take a couple of seconds. Yeah, blew my mind, I was pretty happy. I, I was really expecting about seven minutes less than that. So I think I had uh, good wind conditions, I had good temperature conditions. When I landed, the battery was a little warm, not even excessively hot. The motors were just perfect. I mean, there was, they weren't hot at all. They were just perfect. Uh, I'll say it again, the tune was not great. So if you're looking at the flight footage and you're like, what the hell? I was the same. This is tuned for a sub 250 gram running one of these. Uh, this is a Tattoo 650. So get this out. So with a Tattoo 650, these are a little bit heavier than the uh, GMB batteries I normally run. But with the Tattoo 650, yeah, it's 249.2, and that's with the wrong connector on there. So delete half a gram or a gram for the connector. And the GMB battery, what I normally fly with, that guy. So this is the guy I normally fly with. This is the GMB 4S650 and that gets me at 242.1. So either way, it's under sub 250 grams. Uh, this is a high volt, so it helps too. So I can charge that up to uh, what, 4.35 as opposed to 4.2. So, or 4.25, let's be honest. I overcharge these things to get them to perform as maximum capability as possible. Even the Lion pack, I charge to 4.19, just to make sure uh, when you do the startup and you, uh, you know, you wait for the ESCs and the, the flight controller to, to boot up. Immediately when I arm, I drop from 4.2 to 4.1 or 4.1 to 4.0. So it's just, just, basically accounting for that initial startup and drop of the battery. All right, so now you wanna see it, right? So let's watch some flight footage. I'll put a couple of stills in there. So if you don't wanna watch one hour and five minutes of flight footage, I don't blame you. I wouldn't wanna do it again. Not unless I tuned it, cause it was a little shaky, but uh, still, uh, I probably will have to do it at least one more time because I want to do it on this frame right here. So this guy right now is 46.8 grams. So it's a little thicker. This is actually, a, what did I say? It's 5.5 millimeters thick. So it's an entire millimeter thicker than this frame. I got to thank Richard Downey 
for helping me get that battery out here to Italy. And uh, of course, Brett Elliott for helping me with all these frames. I know it can be a pain in the butt sometimes when I have these good ideas, but uh, we got it done. Thanks guys. So I don't have enough available storage space to load all one hour and five minutes from this flight footage video. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut the video a little bit, give you the last five minutes, and then I'm gonna post an entirely different video of the entire flight footage and I'll put a link in the description for that. But for now, here's the last five minutes of me flying around the field uh, so you can see the route that I took. This is me giving a celebratory thumbs up when I passed the one hour mark. I think this was one hour and one minute. Like I said, I'll post another flight video of the entire flight footage, and then I'll put a link in the video description of that flight. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm gonna try this again on a different frame, but uh, for now, I'm pretty happy with the results.